Release 16 introduces a new flexible material system that will help us achieve greater looking results in our renders. It all starts with our layer system here, where we can start building our material in several layers. For example, a diffuse base, another layer with some more definition on top of that, and finally a third layer that can act as a final reflective coat. Let's delete the layer that is already here for legacy purposes and add a new layer to see how the system works. If we click on the Add button, we see a selection of reflection models we can choose from. Even though this might look scary, it's just different reflection models that achieve slightly different looks. The first four are different shading models for glossy reflections. The next model is for surfaces with micro scratches, uh, such as brushed metal. The main characteristics of an anisotropic material are the stretched highlights in the direction of the micro scratches. The Lambertian and Orinaya options are shading models for diffuse reflections. The Irivan model is for cloth related surfaces from silk to jeans. The last three models are there if we want to get the old style of reflections. Now let's uh, select a model and let's see what kind of options are available. Roughness allows us to create glossy or really diffuse reflections. So a value of 0% roughness gives a mirror-like effect to our reflections. And 100% roughness creates a very diffuse look. The reflection strength controls how much of the environment we'll be able to see in our materials, while the specular strength controls how strong our speculars will be. As you can see, these values can be controlled independently per layer, giving us even more control on the final look of the material. The layer color field is the color parameter in the old material system. Another helpful section in this dialog are the Fresnel settings, which is another type of layer mask with helpful presets for metal and non-metal surfaces. Before diving deeper with uh, some uh, small examples on specific looks, let's see how we can get the old look back. In our reflectance channel, the legacy specular is already enabled, so all we need to do is add a reflection layer and turn the specular strength down to 0%. As you can see now, the speculars are not visible, so we just need to move the specular layer on top. You might be wondering uh, what the difference is between the add mode in the layer and the additive mode in the attenuation field. The blending modes on the layers describe how the layer blends with the one underneath. The average mode is a normal blending mode of the reflection over the color channel. At 100% we only see the reflection. At 50% we have a blending of our reflection and the color channel. And at 0% we only see the color value. The maximum mode is the same as the average mode, except that the normal blending occurs on the individual RGB channels. It's easy to see the change if we switch between these two modes. What is worth noting here is that the maximum mode is the more physically accurate result. Finally, the additive blending of the reflection and the color channel is what you can expect from the additive mode. This mode is more useful for speculars. The metal mode is the same as the older metal mode and the specular channel. It's a fast way to render metal-like surfaces. Now let's move on to some examples so we can see what the new uh, layer system can do. Here we have two layers. One layer for the glittery part of the ball and one for the shiny red part of the ball. The glittery part, as you can see, is just a simple noise shader. For our main settings, we enable a little bit of roughness, along with reflections and a little bit of specularity. For the red part of our object, we use again the GGX algorithm, with a little bit of roughness and some strong reflections. To make the glittery part show through, we just use a black and white image on the layer mask. We can also work the other way around. Have the red part of the ball as the main layer and use the mask on the glittery layer. It's just a matter of preference. 
The power of this system though shows through when we try to create complex layered materials. Like a car paint for example. This new approach reflects more closely how the materials would be created in the real world. Car paint is a layered material. It consists of a diffuse base covered by a clear coat. The new system allows us to recreate our material exactly the same way. For the diffuse base, we choose the Lambertian model and slightly adjust the reflection and specular strength. To imitate the metallic car paint qualities, we add a second layer that is less diffuse than the base layer. To achieve this, we choose a high roughness value. Notice also that we're using a slightly different color which will accentuate the metallic look. To bring out the highlights, we switch the blending mode to add. The third and final layer will give us the clear coat look we want. It's a pure reflective layer and to make the layer underneath visible, we use a Fresnel mask. In this case, we are using the default dielectric value. Another thing we can do quite easily with the new reflectance shader is anisotropic materials. Here for example we have a simple material made with this model. As we can see in the picture here, the material basically stretches the highlights. To produce this effect, the only thing we have to do is increase the roughness of our material and set up a value for the anisotropy. We can also create other types of effects like this one here. Notice that uh, here we have enabled the planar reprojection and uh, we've also turned down the scale a lot. We also have the ability to change the type of the pattern here and switch to other modes. And finally, another typical example for anisotropy are these radial type of patterns with strong highlights. And we can see those in a lot of uh, different objects. For example, uh, at the bottom of pots, uh, like in this example here. To achieve this look, we just enable the radial reprojection and uh, move the radial pattern to the middle. And that's all there is to it. The new reflectance channel for R16 allows us to make some really complex materials that will make our renders even more exciting. Have fun!